everyone to day two of Leading Entrepreneurs of the World Conference 2022, which is an entrepreneurial event focusing on the power of entrepreneurship and innovation. We had a fabulous day yesterday, day one, and day two is looking like it is going to be amazing. And to start off that magic and amazingness is our first speaker today, Yuav Oren. Now, he is the CEO of Zook, and that is a communication platform utilizing books and AR to bring people together. He is also a martial artist, leader, and team player, not to mention the father of three ninjas. Talking to us today on the future of family communication, utilizing cutting edge tech and AR to connect generations. I welcome to the platform, Yuav Oren. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, everybody. Um, Let's pull up my screen here and tell me if you see it. So first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor. And as uh, Alicia made, mentioned, I'm Yoav, the co-founder and CEO of Zook. Um, and we're here to talk today a bit about the future of family communication and how that communication is really intertwined with content and a lot of cutting edge technology. And I really want to share not only, you know, the background of how we started thinking about Zoo, because this is something we deal with on a daily basis, but really share our thoughts leading up to the creation of Zoog. Um, and I hope that this will kind of sparkle up questions um, and thoughts that you guys may have. And I'm looking forward to hearing all your thoughts and questions as well. So again, thank you for having me and great to be here. Since the beginning of time, storytelling has been a basic and historic human trait. We started off with telling stories around the campfire or through drawings on cave walls. And over time, we've moved away from each other. And this caused us to develop other ways to communicate and interact with each other and share our stories, really. But before we understand how we got here, where we are right now, I want to back up a bit and take a minute and just appreciate how this journey looked like in the past century. And when I think about this transformation that we've gone through in the past century, I especially think about my grandparents and the incredible technological evolution that they went through in their lifetime. From a story perspective, if you think about it, they started off with the radio. Eventually, they moved on to the TV. They got color TV. Eventually, they were able to record and rewatch programs via VCR and then DVD. And then eventually watch any content they wanted on demand. From a communication perspective, they went through Pony Express. Not really, don't worry, they're not that old. But they went through mail truck and letters and postcards. And eventually, you know, I I'm skipping the facts. Let's all agree that we'll can skip the fax phase and eventually reached email on the computer, really the ability to send messages whenever they were home. And then finally, of course, to their mobile device and the ability to share, receive messages on the go from anywhere, whenever they wanted. What a journey. But the digital age created a new standard for interactivity and it landed in our palms in different stages of our personal development. Who here in this room, because I don't see a lot of people, I can't see the, the audience, but who here remembers their first computer? So I certainly do, and it looked just like this computer that you see on my screen over here, but it wasn't fully incorporated into every aspect of my life. Today, that standard, of course, has changed. While kids are born into digital devices that are completely intertwined with anything they do on their daily lives. And it's become second nature. Um, if anyone here has a child two years old, you can hand them a device and you'll see that it is completely natural for the child to use your smartphone and do things that you didn't even know about. It's fully integrated. 
And we've been looking for ways to reignite our ability to tell stories or have experiences that light up our, light up our, our senses, similar to what we felt around that campfire. But when you think about it, really since the greeting card, we haven't made any major leaps in terms of interactive communication between generations. Yes, there are emojis and even FaceTime. And it's hard to imagine our lives without these things today. But even so, we have not yet taken advantage of the technological advances in a way that brings that colorful and meaningful postcard experience to our day-to-day -day communication online. So what comes next in this evolution of online connectivity? How can we facilitate this family communication in a way that enhances relationships while blending that together with cutting edge technology? And why is that even important? Is there a way for children to be entertained and engaged with remote family members? And perhaps most importantly, how do we know that now is the right time to do so? So in order for us to take this next step in this evolution, the first thing that we need to consider is who is our audience? Who are we actually building this product for? And when we at Zoo looked at these two very different generations, you had one, you know, young grandparents on one hand, you have young children on the other. Both audiences have very different needs and online activities, right? How then can we create this bridge between these generations? Children today have a much shorter attention span. The stimulation that they get or the threshold for stimulation that they get from content today is off the charts and, and very different than what I got as a child. And young grandparents, and here it's important to distinguish between different generations, even within that grandparents bracket, because they are very, very different. The young grandparents, um, for the most part, have a very similar digital experience that you and I have, right? They all have smartphones or tablets. They've all worked in the past with computers. They've all purchased things, or most of them have purchased things online. They have experience and have been part of this digital transformation. And this massive digital transformation brought with it great opportunities from social media to messaging platforms to video communication. Families are more connected today than ever before. And as can, technology continues to improve, people are ready for that next innovation leap in online communication, especially when it concerns communication with children. The senior generation is also online and ready to connect. In fact, 60% of grandparents are already sharing online interactions with their grandkids on a weekly basis. But in order for us to take this next leap, we also need to make sure that it is connected to our audiences, as I just mentioned. And if we wanna create something that is widely adaptive, we need to start with what we already know and are currently using. Taking young grandparents to a virtual reality experience, as tech savvy as they may be, is too large of a leap. The first step, therefore, in this journey is to innovate in a device that we all have and are using on a daily basis. The last crucial element to consider in our setting is, of course, timing. What is the right timing to do so? So in case you haven't noticed, uh, in the past two years, we've all experienced a global pandemic. And the pandemic influenced all our lives and deepened this divide that we had between our families as we weren't able to really see each other physically. However, it also brought this sudden mass adaptation to video communication, really for the first time. We all adapted to this, right? The business world adapted. And I guess the fact that we're having this conference online and it's completely natural to all of us and testing to that. But the educational role adapted. And yes, even young grandparents got used to this new way of connecting. And while baby boomers have adapted to today's technology and are finding ways to interact online, messaging, video apps simply don't cut it with children. Kids aren't interested in small talk. They easily get bored uninterested in these conversations. They prefer to watch 
their favorite TV show or play an online game. And we saw that this created an even deeper disconnect between families, ours included, of course. And we logged long to, to solve it. And that's exactly why we created Zoom, to really help connect families who are distant. And the way we're doing this is through creative interactions and immersive storytelling. We offer experiences that are created on a mobile or tablet device, yet incorporate cutting edge technology. And we believe that this is the next major step in our technological communication evolution. So with Zoo, we chose to bring people together in the same way the generations before us did, through storytelling. We're taking people back to that intimate feeling of sitting around the campfire, all while sharing meaningful moments through technology, we've learned that the connections that can be made by sharing stories are like really like no other. And by giving anyone the opportunity to create an immersive story experience, we believe the communication will really change forever. So I want to show you for a second how Zoog actually works. So as you enter our app, you actually are shown into a library of different content. And in that library, there are jokes and there are songs and there are short stories and there are books. And as you hover over stories, you get to become different characters. So you can become Winnie the Pooh, for instance, um, or you can become Mozart. Or you can become the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood or Cinderella or any other character that's available. And all you have to do is start recording. And as you record, we automatically change your character. And we complement this with AR, masks and filters and animations. And we even, even add a soundtrack to this experience. And once you're done recording, you can actually share your recording with anyone, right? So it's as if you're sharing a text message, you're sending a link essentially. The children can open up this link on any device at any given time. They can then select their next experience. They can leave you video messages or simply respond with emojis. So very similar to the way children are used to interacting today. And one of the beauties of the way that Zoog works today is that these experiences that you're creating are actually saved forever in a family memory archive. So think if you had the ability to go back and view old recordings left by your grandparents, and then you would be able to share it with your children one day. Think of the value of that. And we're not the only ones who believe in content-based communication. We recently partnered with Snap to provide our audience with the best augmented reality experiences in the world. And in addition, we're also partnering with organizations like DreamWorks Animation to give family members the opportunity to not only view DreamWorks and other organizations' beloved characters, but actually to communicate through them while stepping into their story. What child wouldn't want to see their grandmother star in one of their favorite shows as one of their favorite characters. And I want to today on this stage give you the first glimpse of how that actually looks like. Because in the next two weeks, we're actually launching our first DreamWorks content. This is a show called Gabby's Dollhouse. It's one of Netflix's best performing children's shows. We've taken that show and given parents, grandparents, and even children the ability to step into Gabby's world. And this is kind of the first glimpse into the DreamWorks content. And we're working on bringing many more exciting studios, characters, and stories to Zook. So as I mentioned, so that families can interact with each other through known, trusted, and loved content. Evolution does not wait for us. The next phase in our communication advancement is adding elements of creativity and personalization to to even beyond curated content that we have today. We're also looking at incorporating live interactions. We believe that people deserve to connect with their loved ones in a way that inspires them and brings the same joy of being there side by side, same as that campfire experience. Modern technology will enable family members to interact with children they love as long as it is engaging on one hand, yet approachable on the other. In the same way that video calling blended uh, the telephone and camera technologies, Zoog is blending entertainment with communication using augmented reality. Today, we're providing these experiences through an app. 
in the future, who knows what will be our next giant leap. Nevertheless, we are so excited to help shape that next phase. So if you care about meaningful content for children and are looking for better ways to engage with your loved ones, I invite you all to check out Zoog on the App Store. And of course, get in touch with us. We always love hearing from our audience. Thank you again for having me. And uh, I will now open the floor up to questions. Thank you so much. How interesting and fascinating. And um, can I ask you, are, you, are your grandparents still alive? So my grandfather unfortunately passed away last year, which oh. was a very hard thing for me, yes, because we were extremely close. Uh, yeah. But my grandmother is still with us. And, and, and does she use the... Um, the, the, the so, yeah, so it's a good question. And that's why I kind of made the distinction in the conversation between different, I guess, uh, different generations, even within the grandparents. And we really built Zoog really for, I guess, my parents' generation, anywhere right. between the ages of 55 to 75. So understanding that people in that 90 plus bracket require different, they interact differently with digital devices. Um, yeah. It's incredibly intuitive. Right. So we actually built the product with about 50 grandparents who sat down with us and checked out and still, by the way, check out every feature that we release to make sure that it makes sense, that it's intuitive, that it's easy. And the byproduct has really been that we've connected this generation to augmented reality for the first time. Right. We've made them AR content creators, which is a pretty, pretty amazing thing. And really, if you look at Zoogs today at our audience, the vast majority of people creating content on Zoog are young grandparents. And the over 70% of our users are young grandparents who are creating content on Zoom. Wow. Wow. That's, that's incredible. I mean, it, it, it's such an innovation. And how marvelous, Muzzletov, uh, and congrats as well with now uh, partnering with DreamWorks Animation. And thank, thank you. you for sharing as well that first glimpse. Um, that's, that's wonderful. Um, you know, it, it made me think when you when you opened your your presentation talking about your grandparents and and how they went through radio, television, color television, and then being able to record. And it, it really made me think about our Queen in the United Kingdom. I'm originally from England. Uh, you might have told, and um, you know, and how she's gone through exactly all of that, and now um, she's using these platforms too to be able to communicate. And um, so um, she needs um, she needs to know about Zoog and uh, <laughs> to be able to. That'd be amazing. Great, <laughs> great grandchildren. Yeah. 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 You, you should tell her all about it. Yeah. Well, particularly as well, um, she, um, on the opening of the um, pageant on Sunday, they had a film of her with Paddington Bear. So there you go. I mean, it, you know, she's, she is, is being so, so modern and interacting with um, uh, people, um, you know, through the storytelling. So it would, it would be so apt. It really would. So, uh, we, yeah. we, we, we welcome Her Majesty. <laughs> I, I think she would so benefit from Zoom. I really do. I really do. So um, amazing as well that, um, you know, you're, you're also going to integrate, um, you're going to have live interactions. So that's the way forward for you. Um, okay. And how soon do you think that that's going to be built in? Yeah, so it's interesting. We actually started off with, with live communication product. Right. Our first app was a live app. And over that live app, you had different activities uh, that you could do throughout a live interaction. And the activities included books uh, on one hand, and they also included like trivia questionnaires and simple games. And um, what we learned from this first experiment, uh, we launched in the US with about 100 families, um, was two very important lessons. The first lesson was about the type of experiences that people or grandparents like to do with their grandkids. And by far, it was read them stories right? for a lot of obvious reasons. Right? The stories gave them a very clear framework to communicate, right? Because there's text, there's illustration. I know what I'm supposed to be doing at any given moment. But at the same time, there's enough room for self expression. Uh, but the live component, that's where all the friction happens. I think because when you thought about it, we needed to have everyone involved in these calls home and available 
physically and emotionally at the exact same time, right? The grandparent, the grandkid, the parent as the mediator has to be home and available to give their kid their device so they can have this call. And we learned that it just it created all this friction and tension that didn't happen as often as we would like. And even once you got the kids engaged, suddenly if you had internet connectivity issues or bandwidth, or if you threw in time zones in there, it just, we saw that, you know, it just created all these hurdles. And the other thing that we had to also be very much aware of is how children today prefer to communicate. We saw that children like sharing, you know, voice messages or video recordings, much more than just like picking up the phone and having a conversation. And we also have to very much be astute to that. And that's where we decided to let's offer a asynchronous experience, right? So let the grandparents record and share whenever they're available. You know, let the kid from a distribution perspective, right? The kids don't actually have to download anything, right? So they can open up their recording on any device at any given time. Um, as you know, kids love repetition, right? So they're able to always go back and view these old recordings. Then you have that other benefit of that you're creating this memory archive, right? So these stories are actually saved forever. So if I, you know, I, it's priceless. If I had videos of my grandfather reading stories to me and then I can share it with my kids, it's, there's nothing more dear to that. And, and that's why we decided to really focus at first at an asynchronous experience really just to create that first bond and that connectivity. And in the future, as I mentioned, in the next year, we're actually going to relaunch. So what will happen next year? Right. So, so now with the experience that you've garnered and, and also uh, and, and, and knowing the hurdles of the life to be able to overcome that um, when you do launch that. Yeah, I, th I think it's a, it's important to offer both. And that we actually, when we discuss the live experience with our current user base, you know, a lot of our users said to us, great, but please don't take away the async. Like we love that freedom that we have to create these and not have someone on the other like, side, like take the phone, throw it on the floor, like, you know, all these distractions that we have. And sometimes, you know, the parent just puts the phone down in dinner time, like here, entertain them for two minutes, right? Um, so I think that offering a pathway towards life where you offer the ability to first, you know, let the grandparents interact, as I mentioned, any way that they're, they want to, that they're used to, it can be async. If the kid is available and wants to go on a live call, great, we could do that as well. But I, I think that it's really important to have both options and not an either or. Yes, 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 absolutely. And of course, you mentioned about the pandemic. And so we've all been forced to communicate in ways that we didn't. Um, and ha have you found that this has really um, actually assisted your <laughs> development? Um, because, you know, I mean, uh, the pandemic has been um, awful, but at the same time, there has been a lot of opportunity out of the adversity. And I would think that Zook has really um, been able to help people too through the, um, the, the different ways of communicating. Definitely, uh, Zoom was born out of the pandemic, really was, because we experienced this in our own families, like we weren't able to see our families. So all communication and interactions with our families moved online. And we saw that the tools out there were generic products that weren't meant for cross-generational communication. Right. Zoom wasn't Zoom was built for you know B2B purposes, but it wasn't built for grandparents, grandchildren. There wasn't any type of, you know, there was anything interesting for the children to really engage in these calls. Um, and but on the flip side, as I mentioned in the presentation, it caused this mass adaptation towards video. So the whole world got used to this is the way we're going to connect, and it's inevitable. Like we have to we have to do this. Yeah. So survival mode. So there was this unique point of time where you have this mass adaptation on one hand. From a technology perspective, what you can do over video also change dramatically, right? And then, but you have this gap in terms of the tools out there that are really solving for cross-generational communication. And that's where we kind of felt that we had to step in and solve it. Fantastic. You have, it's been so interesting and fascinating. I've learned a great deal and it has been a pleasure 
to speak with you today. Um, I thank wish you, you all the best in the continued development of Zug, and thank you so much for your speech and presentation for leading entrepreneurs of the world. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.